demon keeps dreaming of the demon town. Motherfucker, bitch, fuck, shit went down. Fleming's got an itch, scratch it with a bitch. Demon keeps dreaming of the demon town. Ooh, Johnson, that's my name. Hello there, Sarah from Seventeen once again, introducing you to my Shadows of the Damned Satanic Hell difficulty video walkthrough. This is the continuation of 3-3, the level entitled As Dead As Evil. And if there's any Sam Raimi fans in the house who are, you know, big Evil Dead bush, you're going to recognize uh, an entire set from Evil Dead on this next level and a whole bunch of references, which is kind of cool, but it doesn't affect the gameplay too drastically, so it's, it's nothing really new. It's just a nice little homage. When you come down here, you want to roll. When you roll, it will actually stun the enemies, as you've just seen, and it'll get you past them. You can run up and get the gem, and uh, there you go. It's the next weapon upgrade, which I believe is an upgrade to the teether. It enables it to have a whole bunch of barrels Medusa-esque. And it makes it a pretty decent weapon, actually. But there's a couple of interesting sequences coming up. One of them is where you have to follow one of those light sources, those slug dudes with the bulbs on the head. And you're going to get attacked by a whole shit ton of enemies. And you can stay in the light and you can use the light against them. But I found a strategy where you go and stand up on a on a porch. Which just seems to make it easier because it funnels the enemies towards you. The only problem is you can't really see them. So unless you have your TV set to quite bright, which I do. It might not work as well for your guys as it does for me. But when you come down here, there's some liquor there. You want to grab that and then you're going to get attacked by a bunch of enemies. And for some reason, I'm going a bit happy-go-lucky with the, the upgraded teether. And it's not the best gun for precision, so I wouldn't really recommend using it. The best thing to do is just light shot some dudes and execute them. So much quicker, so much easier, and you'll save so much more ammunition. It's, it's just, you know, a bit redundant, really. I just go back to doing the usual thing of kicking ass and, and taking names. I'm going to talk about a couple of uh, announcements that I read yesterday when I was playing some games. And the first one is the next batch of Gears of War DLC. So for anybody that's hungry off of Ram's Shadow for more content, you're going to be getting some, and I believe it's on the 3rd of January. Uh, it's nothing too massive, though. It's a bunch of weapon skins, character skins, and new maps, I believe. One of them is Escalation, which is not new at all, but it's not a bad map. I did enjoy it on Gears 1, but... I don't know how I feel about it personally, because I did buy the season pass, and I kind of was guess I was hoping for more, you know, I don't know. It would have been nice to get another campaign so very close to the last one, but I know that's, you know, impractical and, and a bit unrealistic. It would have been nice to, to get features upgraded to beast mode or features upgraded to horde mode, that would have been cool. It would have been nice to get a patch so that the, the medals and... and I can't even remember what those Onyx things are called would count in, in Campaign and Horde, so every active reload you get doesn't have to be in the goddamn multiplayer to work towards that Onyx, and things like that, you know, just the little things, but apparently we're getting a couple of characters, and there's also a prestige system being, a, a new leveling system, which is when you get to level 100, you're going to be able to go back through it again and get a different icon at the end, and... I don't know about your guys, but getting to level 100 on Gears of War seems to take a little bit longer than getting to, you know, the, the max level on Call of Duty does, so only the the complete psychopaths are going to be looking into doing that. And there's a couple still playing the game, but you'll notice the numbers have significantly dropped off now that Battlefield and everything's come out, which is it's a shame to see for Epic, because I do believe that Epic, out of all of them, makes the better game. Even though the sales don't, you know, represent that. It's just a case of people don't seem to find the same longevity in Gears of War that they do in, in the first person shooter stuff. And uh, that's kind of tragic, but it's just how it works. It's just, you know, it's just the system, it's the business that we're in. And uh, this is the spot that I mentioned. If you sit up on this balcony, you can wait for them to come to you. They can't climb over the railing, it doesn't seem. They have to run around and go up the steps. As this guy's just proven when he slashes me. He's the only person you want to be aware of because he's fast and he hurts. He's one of the new enemies, he's the dude that uh, vanishes and then like chases you down and attacks you with the giant scissors on his hands. He's, he's a fucking pain in the ass. but he's the only real threat here. Everybody else, you're going to see them coming and you're going to be able to take them out. Uh, when I watched this back, I did see that scissor guy run up the stairs, but I was a little bit slow when I was playing the game. and It's probably due to, you know, not having my hearing, because as many know, I do watch films and series and listen to podcasts when I record the guides, so my hearing is... Is definitely not there, but if I get to a section that I get stuck on or I know that I'm going to have to concentrate, you know, that shit gets paused, volume gets cranked up, and I go into try-hard mode. 
but just keep spraying dudes. And this section does last kind of long, but it's, you know this is easily the the safest route through it, I do believe. But yeah, Gears is Gears is a great game. It's just the content's kind of crazy. And at this moment in time, my hard drive is full, which is pissing me off because. Uh, I managed to get my Battlefield 3 disc working for about 20 minutes and then it went back to not working again. And uh, I played a game. I only went like 6 and 3 because it was the end of a rush map. I didn't know where I was. There was a bunch of tanks attacking my spawn and I, I, I just, you know, kind of moved across to one of the MCOM sites and stayed there until I saw a dude try and disarm it. And I killed him and I pushed forward and killed a couple other people. Then I got sniped and I got killed by a tank. And, and it, it, it's all pretty fun. And uh, I wanted to play it with friends, but it turns out there is a 2 gig update for that game that if you don't have, you can't play with the people that do have. And every single one of my buddies has the update, and I don't even physically have enough room on my hard drive to get the fucking update. So, thanks a lot, Dice, you bastards. But um, it's pretty much forcing me to go out and buy a new hard drive, because I should really do that. <laughs> and uh, then I'm going to have to borrow a, a data transfer kit and all that shit. By the way, just then, if you do not go inside the door quickly, she will grab you and it's an insta-kill and you'll probably have to do that entire fight again or or maybe you'll just have to do her chasing you in that last few seconds. But suffice to say, you do not want to die, so go through the door as quick as you can and you'll avoid some frustration. So yeah, I'm, I'm in the process of probably getting a new hard drive because it's, it's just a pain in the ass. And my Xbox, as, as people know, is running really slow. I probably need a new one of those. And it's, it's just money, money, money all the time, guys. It fucking is. And I am so skint. It's unbelievable. But I want to play Battlefield. And uh, I even deleted the texture pack so that I could get the, the download for the DLC, for the, for the update on the online. And when I deleted the, the textures, not only does the game look like a piece of shit, which is horrific considering it should be on the fucking disc, uh, I couldn't get the disc to work to download the update, so it was kind of like losing the war after two battles. It was just ridiculous. And it's a big old shame, but there's a lot of stuff that I'm, I'm trying to get rid of to make space on my shitty 10 gig hard drive, and it's just not worth it anymore, so I think I'm going to be investing to, to make that easier. Especially with the second bit of news that I'm going to segue into, which is the Modern Warfare 3 is going to be getting some DLC. And uh, they haven't confirmed what it is yet, but it's going to be very soon. And they've also mentioned it's not just going to be the map pack nonsense that it's been before. They're actually going to be introducing new Spec Ops missions, new, new you know... New, new everything, hopefully. Maybe they'll be bringing in some new weapons, that would be great. Maybe they'll bring in some new perks, that would be cool too. Who knows? They've already introduced some new game modes. Hopefully there's going to be a hell of a lot more, you know, diversification type of stuff. Maybe there'll be a combat training introduced, so everybody that starts having a bad connection day can go and play a game that actually is fucking fun and responsive. Who knows? Maybe they'll, they'll, they'll bring four-player co-op to survival, because it should have had it from the start. We, we can't really tell at this moment in time, but the good news is they are making changes and even Robert Bowling has said himself there are three development teams currently working on DLC for the game, so it better be shit or, cause if it's not, you know, people are still going to buy it and it doesn't really make a difference, but on a pride level, I'm just going to hate Infinity Ward a little bit more than I already do, even though, if we're completely honest, this isn't Infinity Ward, this is the husk of the company that once was. But this section here, you've got to run away from Paula once more, picking up strawberries. And this one's a little bit more challenging, because when we get through this gate, you've got to do a bit of fighting and shoot some barrels and shit and try and find the collectible that opens the next door. And Paula's going to be chasing you while you do this. And if she grabs you, she will kill you, and it is game over. So you need to stun her with the light shot and uh, focus on killing the dudes. So as soon as she gets kind of close, run away a little bit spin around, hit her with the light shot, and then go back in to, to take down the dudes. You want to be super careful because she recovers from that shot really fast, and she'll do some serious, you know, she just murders you, there's nothing you can do, she grabs you, you're dead, she's the touch of death. She's, you know, she's she's fucking Bruce Lee, she's Chuck Norris, she's whoever you want to call her. She's she's just dangerous, and um, there we go, there's a collectible, dropped by one of the enemies, as soon as you grab it, you want to run over to the baby face, and it's going to let you into the next cabin. Simple as, simple does. And uh, some more uh, achievement news as well that I noticed the other day was Azure's Wrath, a game I am super excited for. has had its achievements list um, put up on 360achievements.com, or .org, sorry. And unfortunately, half of the achievements are secret, so I, I think the story related, they must be. And uh, it doesn't really give you any 
real you know insight as to difficulty levels or things like that but it does show you that it's going to have a lot of you know do certain amounts of combats things do certain amount of counters uh, use a certain type of you know energy mode called burst mode and one's called unlimited mode so hopefully it's going to be a really really cool you know devil may cry esque in-depth action game uh, the worst case scenario right now is if it's you know, splatter house with crazy Japanese visuals. That would be tragic and I would probably cry. But at this moment in time, it's looking more, you know, awesome action, crazy game than it is anything else. And I'm really looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, stay tuned for a guide for that because I will be doing it. Cannot wait. I'm super stoked. I'm also going to be doing a guide to the the Xbox Live version sequel of Alan Wake, the, the American Nightmare that's coming out. I know it's not going to be a fully fledged game, but I'm still excited for it because I'm a massive Alan Wake fanboy, as I've mentioned in a previous video. A couple of price tags have been introduced onto the Devil May Cry High Definition Pack. On the shop that I buy them from, it says it's going to be 23 quid, which is an absolute steal for three games. Obviously, it's only really two games because one of the games is absolute dog shit, but when you bear in mind that that one game came out at 40 quid when it originally came out, it's still a bit of a, a bargain, if you ask me. Uh, this fight right now, these guys love to teleport and chase you down. And the best thing to do is to wait for them to get close and hit them with the skull cushioner. You'll notice I've been aiming for their legs, because I read on a forum, if you can knock one of their legs off, you can do a stamp move and you can stamp them forever. You can stamp them until you get 999 gems, and it never worked for me, so I must have been doing something wrong. And, uh, no idea what it was, but best thing to do is to try and hit them in the chest. If you hit them in the chest, you'll take them down significantly faster than I did just then. And uh, once they're dead, you will get your upgrade to the Skull Fest 9000, which enables you to fire four skulls at the same time instead of just one. And uh, it comes in the nick of time, because we're going to be taking on the next real boss fight, which is the Bird Boy. And uh, this boss can be a pain in the ass. so until you learn the, the pattern, you're probably going to have a couple of cheap deaths, because I know I did. And uh, this section right now, by the way, if you can put a couple of the, the charge shots on the ground and wait till they all stand in the radius of them you will get that achievement for getting five kills with the explosive second feature of the the, the boner the hot boner feature and uh, this is the place I did it it's the easiest place on the game to get and it takes a couple seconds so nice a little bit of achievement knowledge getting dropped and hopefully you'll I think it's 20g you get for that one so you are welcome but once again the blue flowers mean that we're going to be meeting up with Christopher and hopefully getting some shit from him which is probably going to be more upgrade points if I can afford them I can't afford red gems because they're expensive as shit on this difficulty so I'm just going to go through the door and end the level but as per normal guys thanks for watching thanks for listening and you take care now